In the 1920s, when British archaeologist Leonard Woolley was excavating the ruins of the ancient city of Ur, he and his team discovered a large cemetery near its center. Ur was one of the greatest and most important cities, both economically and politically, of the area of Iraq that we today know as Sumer. The cemetery contained over 2,000 graves and was estimated to have been in use for around 500 years. The earliest and most exquisite burials date back to the mid-early dynastic period of Sumer between 2600 to 2450 BC. One of the most famous discoveries within the cemetery has become known as the Great Death Pit which was an open, square-shaped burial area. Woolley identified 16 of the graves found there as royal tombs, due to the abundance of luxury grave goods within them, as well as what he described as peculiarities of structure and ritual. Not everyone agrees that these were the tombs of royal individuals. Some have argued that instead, they may have been important members of the religious establishment, such as high priests or priestesses. However, there have been objects uncovered in the death pit, such as cylinder seals with the royal titles Lugal and Nin inscribed upon them, along with grave goods and clothing that are generally not typical of members of the religious establishment. Due to this, most still believe that those buried within the most lavish tombs at Ur were indeed royalty. Some of the grave goods discovered included intricately carved and decorated jewelry, gold and silver vessels, objects containing lapis lazuli and carnelian, musical instruments, weapons, helmets, and other artifacts that reflect the advanced craftsmanship and cultural sophistication of the Sumerians. The most iconic find was the so-called Standard of Ur, which was a box decorated with mosaics depicting scenes of war and peace. However, among such objects were also the remains of tens of thousands of other anonymous men and women who were dressed as, and carried objects pertaining to, soldiers, bodyguards, servants, musicians, and other attendants. It's here that behind all the glittering gold and precious stones, the darker side of the cemetery comes to light. In one grave, Woolley and his team found the remains of at least 74 men and women. But they don't appear to have died of natural causes, but were sacrificed for the well-being of the royal inhabitants of the Death Pit. In one of his reports on the burial site, Woolley noted that the bones of the court attendants were so broken and decayed that there was no way for him to determine how they may have died, and he wondered if they'd been marshaled in order and cut down where they stood, or whether they were slaughtered apart and laid in the grave. However, his wife, Catherine, thought that they may have drunk some sort of drug or poison due to cups being found near many of the bodies. Woolley soon became convinced of this as well, and believed that a large copper cauldron found in the pit may have been used to hold the poison. He also believed that most had probably been willing participants in some sort of death ritual before the sacrifice that would enable them to serve their royal masters in the afterlife. This way, the ruler, his queen, and perhaps family members would be able to continue their privileged existence in the next world. However, in the last few decades, such assertions have been challenged by new evidence obtained by CT scans of several of the remains of the cemetery's inhabitants, and the results paint a much darker picture of what may have really happened. The findings from such scans and related analysis suggest that the attendants were killed by a blow to the back of the head, most likely with a battle axe that contained a long spike on one end. After the fatal blow, the bodies were heated, 
embalmed with mercury, and then dressed before being laid out neatly, as if they were taking part in a celebratory procession consisting of royal bodyguards and musicians. In the March 2011 Journal of Antiquity, Dr. Aubrey Bodsgaard states that mercury sulfide and other minerals, such as arsenic, can act as preservatives in mortuary procedures by delaying the putrefaction process. She writes, The Ur specimens may represent the earliest known use of mercury in western Eurasia. Locally available sources existed in recent volcanic exposures in Turkey and Iran, and could have been transported to southern Mesopotamia along well-established trade routes. The application of heat and mercury to the Ur skulls might be considered an early attempt at embalming without arterial infusion, a temporary method to reduce decay while elaborate and lengthy funerary rites were performed before burying deceased bodies. The practice of human sacrifice in Sumer was a bit of an anomaly in the history of ancient Mesopotamia, and ended around 2450 BC. There's no evidence that it was ever revived, in Ur or elsewhere in the region. So I hope that you enjoyed this short video and are prepared for a lot more to come. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. I'd also really like to thank the channel's patrons for making videos like this possible. These include, but are certainly not limited to, GrandKick69, Yap de Graf, Pasta Frola, Michael Lewis, Daniel Allen, Danny Van Eck, Wanix TV, Robert Morgan, Strobex, Frank, Tim Lane, Sebastian Hurtado Correa, Michael Trudell, Leader Titan, Micah G, John Scarberry, Andrew Bomer, Connor Dolson, Krish, David R, Stephen Ball, Gabe, Monty Grimes, Franz Robbins, Cyrus Mir, Diane Astra, Nimrod Nir, Hypno San, Brendan Redman, Faridun Dadashanji, Jimmy Daruwala, Anahida Debu, Gulistan Debu, Sher Kam, Farhad Kama, and all of the channel's patrons on Patreon for helping to support this and all future content. Check out the benefits to being a Patreon member, and if you'd like to join, feel free to click the link in the video description. You can also follow History with Sai on Instagram, Facebook, X, formerly known as Twitter, as well as continue to listen to special audio programs on the History with Sai podcast. Thanks again, and please stay safe.